Welcome, Impactful Parents. It's time for the Impactful Parenting Podcast, where I give you parenting tips and resources to make you a more impactful parent to your school-age child. I am your host, Christina Campos. My teenager lies in bed on the phone. They are motionless, and their eyes are glued to a screen. Hey, get up. We have an appointment in 15 minutes, I say, because I know that if we don't leave soon, we're going to be late. And unfortunately, my teen doesn't seem to care about the appointment. He moves at the speed of a sloth. And already I know we're going to be late. Hello, my name is Christina Campos. I'm founder of The Impactful Parent, and I help parents of school-age children turn their chaos into connection with their adolescent. I am a mom of four kids, a teacher that has taught every grade from preschool through high school. And today I help moms and dads like yourself navigate that exhausting, confusing, frustrating, but rewarding world of parenting. So welcome to The Impactful Parent. Now today is a special episode. It is question and answer Thursday. This is a special episode where you too can email me at theimpactfulparent at gmail.com or you can direct message me on social media and ask me a parenting question about raising a school age child. So don't be shy. You can also ask for a friend, wink, wink, (laughs) and all questions are always kept anonymous. Today, I had a listener write in and ask me, how can I motivate a lazy teenager? They say that their teenager is driving them crazy and all they want to do is be on their phone and they feel like they're constantly nagging and they would love to get some strategies to help their kid get up and moving. So I am really excited they asked this question. Thank you so much for submitting this. And I get it. Oh my gosh, you are so not alone. Teenagers and their lack of caring about things can be one of the most frustrating parts of parenting. Everyday parents worldwide spend days upon days trying to motivate their teens with no success. Why is the daily routine of nagging your teenager so frustrating? Well, I'm going to say because when push comes to shove, parents don't have any control. I said it. I know you don't have control. If your teenager doesn't want to listen to you, they won't. If they don't want to do something, they won't. Ultimately, parents don't have the control of their young adult past a certain age or a certain weight limit even. Um, So if your child doesn't want to wake up on time or if they don't want to do their homework or they don't want to eat right, then they just don't care. And there's very little that parents think that they can do about it. It makes us feel helpless and parents don't like to feel helpless. Now, I know there's a lot of parents out there hearing me right now and saying, wait a minute, I do have control over my teen. I will take away their phone. And usually this entails them making life so miserable until their teen wants to or has to listen to them. And I would say to that, that I feel like your control over your child is a little misplaced. Sure, you can make your teen so miserable that they actually want to comply with your requests. But in the end, they're still making the choice to comply and you don't really have the control that you think you do. So, of course, it just makes everybody now feel even more hopeless and helpless right now, right? (laughs) It's frustrating. I get it. Those parents out there who are frustrated with their lazy teenager, give yourself some grace. There are millions of parents out there that feel the same way and you're definitely not alone. So let's talk about how can we get our teens up and moving with some strategies to actually get them to not be so lazy, lazy. Are you ready? Let's do this. First of all, let's talk about the word lazy. All right, you can, to me, call your child lazy, but be very careful that your child never or very seldom hears you call them lazy. This goes with any type of adjective that you identify with your child, whether it's a compliment or 
or not, whether you're saying, hey, you're beautiful, you're smart, you're lazy, you're uh, a procrastinator, a parent's narrative actually becomes a teenager's way of thinking. So if you get a parent that has constantly calling you lazy, then you start to believe in your own head as a teenager that you're lazy. And then it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. So by even you calling your teenager lazy, you are actually making the situation worse. They start to believe that I am lazy. That's who I am. And so they start to play the role. So stop that immediately. That's tip number one. Now let's get into the secret sauce for getting your teenager to listen. And it actually comes in five parts, five parts. And let's dive into those now. The first thing that you need to identify is know what you can control. Okay. Part number one, know what you can control. Let's start with that. We've already established that you can't actually control your teen. So if you try to control your teen, you're going to inevitably get pushback and rebellion and that bond that you have with them will be damaged. So what can you control? <laughs> the answer is actually two things. The first one I'm going to tell you right now and the second one I'm going to tell you in a minute. The first one, you can control how you react to your teen's behaviors. And this is really important. Many parents make the mistake of getting emotional, okay, with their teenager. They scream at their kid and they allow that frustration to get the best of them because teens are very frustrating. It's hard to control our own emotions. And if you don't have practice with this, it sucks. It's very difficult, but we need to learn how to do it because when you, you react emotionally to bad choices or bad behaviors, you open up the possibility for your teen to actually misinterpret you. When their parent is angry and yelling, they think as a teenager, my parent doesn't love me. And it may seem like a crazy conclusion to jump to, but that's how many teens think. This is how they interpret that response that you just did. So if your child doesn't feel like you love them and it, they don't feel like you accept them for who they are and they don't feel secure in the relationship they have with you because of name calling or just the way you yell at them all the time or nagging all the time, guess what? They will never listen to you. And that is crucial here. So we need to make sure that we are controlling how we react to our teen's behavior. We need to stay calm. But this goes to number two of what you need in order to motivate a lazy teenager. And that's, you gotta build trust with your teen, okay? Most importantly, kids want to know that you will accept and love them no matter what, no matter how bad they are, no matter their bad choices, no matter how frustrating they can be. Children want to know that you will love them no matter what. But often that reaction that we have is so undesirable because we're saying things, we're yelling, our body language, we're hovering. Those reactions say, I don't love you. Or sometimes those reactions say, huh, I think you're stupid. And although we may not say those words out loud, it is the message that the child is receiving. And that's why it is so critical to keep calm and keep emotions out of discipline. Yeah. Don't use emotions in your discipline. Parents are often so emotional about their child's choices because they just didn't listen to them or they feel disrespected or maybe they crashed the car. And that's a very emotional for parents that they punish from a place of anger. I don't want you to do that. These parents want to make the child feel bad for their choices. They uh, sometimes shame their kids and they also threaten them unintentionally even sometimes because we are so emotional about whatever they did and so frustrated because we know what they could do so much better. But then we let our emotions get the best of us and then we react badly. So consider that this behavior is counterproductive to our objective to get our teen to trust us and leverage our influence so that they will actually listen to us when we tell them to do something. Why would a teenager want to hear or even trust someone who is always disappointed in them? 
yelling at them or making them feel bad. And this actually brings me to the second thing that you can control. And what you can control is what you provide for your child. Make a list of things that your child cares about. Okay. Wi-Fi, TV, phone service, transportation, money, time with friends. Okay. And you can actually use these things to persuade your child to do what you want. For example, you might say, if you do your homework before 5 p.m., you can pick whatever you want for dinner tonight and I'll give you some extra time with your friends later on um, on your device maybe. But if you do your homework after 7 p.m. because you procrastinated all night, all night long, I'm going to turn off the Wi-Fi until it actually gets finished. Now, there's two great things about this, okay? One, a parent is setting up the expectation before their child even has an opportunity to move, right? You're saying, this is what I want. This is what I'll give you as a reward if you do what I say. And this is what's going to happen if you're not going to listen to me. When you set that expectation up front, now you are being very predictable about what their future is going to look like. Predictability actually brings a lot of calm and starts to build trust with our teenager. So I know you can't do this with every single behavior they do, but if you have a teenager where you know that they're not going to get their homework done on time, or maybe they're not going to get up um, on time for school, you know, pick the behavior that's driving you the most crazy right now that makes you want to pull out your freaking hair and think about what can you reward them for? What can you take away or punish them for, you know, give them more chores to do. Okay. Punishment doesn't always have to be taking away something. You can also add things as punishment, like cleaning their room or fit, cleaning something. I don't know. There's lots of things you could do, but just be creative. But when you set that precedent, you're doing the right thing. Now, unfortunately, a lot of parents make the mistake of not following through with their word. And this is not good. This breaks trust. And again, we're going back to, we need to build trust with our teenager. So you must be consistent. You have to follow through with your word. This is another way that you will be building trust with your child. This means you need to say what you mean, mean what you say, be consistent and predictable. Now let's get to the third step, third thing that you need to do in order to help your lazy teenager. And that is you have to learn how to leverage your influence, okay? Now, once you establish that calm reaction to your child's bad choices, you actually start to ask them questions. Why do you want to be so late? Why are you so tired? You know, why do you not want to get your homework done? But you have to keep asking these questions because the objective here is to get your teenager to say the consequence out loud. You do not want to tell your teenager the consequences. You're trying to pull it out of them so they'll say it in their own words. When we start telling our teen what will happen if they don't study, if they don't get up on time, whatever the situation might be, your teenager doesn't care. In fact, they feel like you're talking at them. So this does very little. And on top of that, if they actually agree with you on the consequence that you're laying out for them, hey, if you don't get up on time, you're going to be late for school. And then the teacher is going to do this and blah, blah, whatever. When you start telling them the consequence, that is giving you another opportunity to say, I told you so. And teens don't like that. So just avoid it, okay? Instead, you want your child to communicate the consequences out loud on their own. And you do this by asking a lot of questions. Well, why do you want to do that? What's going to happen, okay? Are you okay with those consequences? Where is this going to lead you? How do your actions make you feel about yourself? And how is this behavior serving you? You want your teen to come up with their own conclusions and connect the dots on how their actions affect their lives. 
this is what you're doing with the questions. Now realize that getting your child to connect the dots one time will probably not be effective. You're going to have to have these talks several times with your teenager before they're really going to internalize their choices. Now, the next step in this process is for parents to really learn to talk to their teen in a non-judgmental way and to ask if you can help them. Okay, now this statement has to come from a place of love and selflessness when you say, hey, how can I help you? Complete love and selflessness because your teen is going to sniff out your intentions if you're just trying to help because you are so frustrated and you just want it to get it over with. It is only when your child believes that you are not thinking about yourself or your own agenda that they will actually start to listen to you. They need to feel that you're coming from a place of, let me help you. And when the, that trust is built, they are more likely to start opening up, confiding in you, taking your advice as something that will genuinely help them and not just serve your needs. Because most teenagers won't do something for you. Mm -mm. But they will do something if they see the value in it for themselves. This all brings us to the most important step of all, and that is number five, identify the problem. Now, steps one through four were all about you as a parent really building trust. Those were all about building trust. How do we get our teenager to see us in a, as a safe space and a person that they actually want to listen to. Now, once you've done that, you are ready to look at your teenager in a whole new light and perspective because you started to build up your relationship again. And now you can see why are they doing this to themselves? Why are they making those bad choices? And it really comes down to five things, five reasons why your teenager is being so lazy. The first one, is drive. Drive is the ability to act. It is having a sense of purpose, curiosity, interest, or even passion. So does your child have a passion? Do they have a special interest? Okay. Maybe your child lacks in drive. This is what you might want to identify. The second reason that teenagers are so lazy is because they lack grit. Grit is the motivation to keep going when something gets tough. So does your child quit when things get difficult? Do they lose motivation once things take too long or become too tedious? This is something you want to identify. The third reason why teenagers are so lazy is because they lack goals. Goals are about having a roadmap to where you want to go and how you want to end up. So does your child lack direction because they can't see beyond today or even beyond next week? Do they not have a destination? So do they not have goals? If you can identify this, then you can start to address that. I see this a lot when a parent's goal for a child is for them to go to college. But the child's goal is not the same. They don't want to go to college. They want to be a mechanic or do something else. Maybe they want to be a social media influencer and they don't see the value in their present education. And so they don't put any effort into it. This is why you think your child is being lazy, but really it's because they lack goals or you don't have the same goal and they don't feel like their education meets their goal. See where I'm going here? Another reason your child might be lazy is they lack the knowledge to start. Does your child know how to get started? Do they know step one? Or are they paralyzed by the fear of the unknown? Or do they lack the knowledge to take that first step? A lot of times kids are so paralyzed by the fear of the unknown or feel, feel so overwhelmed by all the things they might have to do, they don't even know how to take that first step and get going. 
And so it appears like they're being lazy because they're avoiding it altogether when really they just don't know how to start. And lastly, does your child have a secret fear of failing? Sometimes kids don't want to even try as it's just too scary. So they act uninterested because it's easier than admitting that they're scared or that they could do something wrong or that they might fail or simply that they can't do it perfectly. So they just avoid it altogether again and they don't want to do it. And this makes them look lazy. Parents need to know what kind of motivation their child is lacking to help their child to get moving. Which of these five components of motivation does your child lack? Or perhaps they lack all five. Once this important analysis is made, see, parents can take action to help their teenager get motivated appropriately. So depending on what is lacking in their motivation, parents can be more intentional about helping their child in a more constructive way. So let's say your child has very little drive. That means you need to help your child find interests, foster ideas, brainstorm together. If your child is lacking grit, maybe you need to help them find external motivators. Maybe you need to reward them. Maybe you need to play to their um, love language. Praising might help, even being their cheerleader. If your child lacks goals, then you need to help them make smart goals and track their progress for them so that they can see that they are making progress. Because sometimes, well, many times, many kids don't want to track progress and then they feel like they're not getting anywhere. When in reality, even baby steps is progress. So you need to show them that they are. If your child lacks the knowledge to start the activity, then parents can break things down into smaller, more manageable pieces and maybe even research together the steps that your child needs to do in order to accomplish their goal. And lastly, if your child has this fear of failure that makes them look lazy, then address perfectionist tendencies and celebrate small wins and encourage them to take those baby steps so that they are successful and they can start building confidence. And that's it. Ooh, I know that's a lot of how to motivate a lazy teenager, but you got this. You can know what you can control. You can focus on your own reactions and really create that safe space so your teenager can start to build your trust, which is number two, build that trust with your teenager. Watch how you react. Make sure you're consistent. Make sure that you are laying out rewards and consequences beforehand so that you are predictable. Three, don't forget to leverage your influence. And now you need to talk to your child in a non judgmental way by asking them lots of questions to pull out the consequences of their own actions so they can say those words themselves. And lastly, identify the problem with your teenager. Why are they being lazy? Is it because they lack drive, grit, goals, the knowledge to start, or they have a fear of failure? And now time for some announcements. Don't forget about the Impactful Parent Mastermind class this week. This is 100% attend from home virtual event, and you can choose to join me either on Sunday evenings or Wednesday during lunch. Our discussion topic changes every week, and this week we're going to be talking about disrespectful and defiant teenagers. Now, you can either join us passively, where you could just sit back and relax and just take it all in from the other side of your computer screen, or you can join in on the conversation and ask me questions live. Either way, you're going to get a lot of information about disrespectful and defiant teenagers this week. So register with the link below. Thank you for joining me today. Remember that this episode is just a small part of what the Impactful Parent offers. Also available are online courses, parent support groups, coaching services, and the Impactful Parent app. So find out more by going to theimpactfulparent.com. And become a more impactful parent by downloading the Impactful Parent app. 
The Impactful Parent app is free and you can carry help and tips and resources right in your pocket. So discover new techniques to make your parenting more effective and get parenting resources that will make your life easier. Download the app today. You got nothing to lose since it's a free download. So go to theimpactfulparent.com or your phone's app store and just look up Impactful Parent and I'll be there. So that way you can learn how to step up your parenting game and become a more impactful parent. But until next time, you got this. I'm just here to help. Thank you for listening today. Remember to subscribe and share this podcast with a friend. And don't forget, the Impactful Parenting Podcast is an extension of the Impactful Parent community. Go to the Impactful Parent website and download the free Impactful Parent app so you don't miss a parenting tip that can help you and your family. Thanks for listening today. So go to theimpactfulparent.com and see you next episode.